every month we try to do one lecture as NMC. Uh, unfortunately, Mobile today forgot to print out these notepads for all of you. Forgot to bring them. You printed them, but so if you turn it at the back, um, sorry, you will see what he, there are services that we offer. Uh, strategic management consultancy. I'm sure you can witness Skumbuzo. Change management consultancy, performance, talent, innovation, small business development program, human capital. That's where Bantabanjong or Nomon comes in. HR, risk, audit, and tax. So we offer those services. So we always try. We do a Masama lecture and then we upload them once again to YouTube TV. But we don't get, we don't get into details of what, um, how do we service a client in relation to innovation because you need to pay for that. But what we do, we just make you think why innovation is important, why talent management is important, why change management is important, why performance management is important, so that you can say, come and help us. That's what, so that's the purpose. And we invite different people to come and be part of this session and uh, let them contribute and then and see what, what can be done going forward in terms of forming a bigger cycle of people who are part of NMC. Uh, so today, I know I communicated with a lot that today we're discussing talent management. Then I changed during the week. In fact, I changed last night too. Let's talk about innovation. I'm gonna talk about talent management in our next session. I'm sorry about that. So we're gonna do innovation management, which I realized we are assisting one KZN TV with innovation management services and some other clients. So people wonder, what is it that you, when NMC says they are doing innovation management, what are you referring to? So I wanna deal with that today. So we are not projecting. I said, let us make notes because we've got a problem with the projector. But uh, after this session, I'm gonna share the slides with you. So you're gonna be making notes. So number one, my thoughts, thoughts about innovation. I said, number one, innovation creates uniqueness. Innovation creates what? Uniqueness. So for you to have what you call competitive advantage in any sector that you are in, you must have what called uniqueness. You must be unique. Uh, Zulil, you must be unique. You must always ask yourself, what is my uniqueness as a business? How do we differ from MFC as NMC? How, if someone sees in terms of financial consultants and see in CIS, what's the difference between the two? And you can only achieve that if you constantly innovate. So innovation gives you that uniqueness, the status of being unique. And then uniqueness leads to what? Rarity. Uniqueness leads to rarity. Um, what do I mean if I say rarity? Something which is very scarce. So once you become unique, you become scarce. And then what happens after that? You become valuable. So rarity creates value. Rarity creates... When something is rare, it becomes valuable. Gold is not, I mean, I mean, gold is rare. That's why we value gold. You can't find it anywhere. That's why we value it. So you must strive to make sure that your business becomes a gold in that sector. You must just discuss, be unique in the sector. If you are in the logistics sector, find your uniqueness. If you're in a consulting sector, find something that will make you unique in that consulting space. And marketing, find something that makes you unique because that's what you're gonna create rarity. And the moment you become rare, then you become valuable. People can start valuing you. Say, you know what? If we want Eric to come and address us, this man is rare. He is scarce. Therefore, we're gonna do everything possible to make sure that he is part of this team and we're gonna give him exactly what he wants. You see, when you are rare, when your business offer a rare service, sometimes you don't 
uh, people don't count, don't, 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 don't ask discounts in your service because they understand it is a rare service. We need it. We need it. So it's innovation that gives you that status of becoming rare. So I always, uh, I always had a problem with the, and I always say, if you look at the accounting sector, auditing sector, as Kubozo, I said when I was assisting, when we were doing strategy, I said, those sectors are what are operating in a red ocean. A red ocean means it's overloaded, crowded environment. So you must try by all means not to operate in a crowded environment. So try by all means to go away in a blue ocean where there is no one operating. So you do what? You innovate to get there. So no one operates at a level where Apple is operating so far. Samsung is there, Huawei is there, but if you look into these giants, they are different. And if you look at the value, uh, the value of an Apple is higher than the value of Samsung, Huawei and other uh, 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 telecommunication companies. So what makes them to be valuable is because of the level of innovation. So if you don't innovate, then you won't achieve the status of being valuable. You won't find yourself being recognized as a unique service provider. Yes, there will always be com co 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 um, I mean, uh, competition, but amongst many, you should stand out. You should stand out. Stand out amongst many. That's the purpose of innovation, is to stand out. The services that you offer, they should always stand out. Even if you are lecturing, no more. Be a unique lecturer because of the way you deliver the modules. That's innovation. So find a way that when you do it, other lecturers, they, they feel that, no, we need to submit here. Uh, you only create or achieve the status of being a person called a person of authority if you are unique in the manner you do things. So innovation can give you that. Innovation will make you earn respect. Innovation will make you earn respect because of the way you do things. So I've got respect for Steve Jobs. I've got respect for Elon Musk because they, they, they innovate. I've got respect for Jeff Bezos. And there are so many African innovators out there that I know. I've got respect for them. This is Sergio. I'm going to do Sergio in two when I'm going to show the list of the greatest innovators that I, I have respect for. Then number two, in the absence of innovation, expect no growth. So if you want to grow, then you must be someone who innovates constantly. So in the absence of innovation, then you expect no growth. Because as far as I know, everything that we see today, everything is as a result of what? Innovation. Someone saw a cow and decided that a cow is for eating. I can eat a cow, right? So from a cow, I can make what? Meat. Someone looked at the same cow and said, from this cow, I can get what? A shoe. Can you see? Innovation. Someone, when he looks at the apple, say not, I can just eat it raw as it is. But someone who looks at the apple, what do they see? Juice, apple juice, innovation. So you, you can only grow if you entertain ideas. Because innovation is about ideas. 
So where there is no innovation, expect no growth. As people who have been doing one and the same thing for years, where are they today? And those who did not partake, who did not take innovation serious, most companies are dead. How many companies do you know that are dead? We did not partake or take serious the issue of innovation. How many of you still remember Ericsson? How many of you still remember uh, Blackberry? Siemens. Music, and so on and so on. So when you don't innovate, you won't grow. In the absence of innovation, expect no growth. Then number three, innovation is like change. It makes people feel uncomfortable, but it cannot be resisted. It must be embraced and be implemented consistently. Did you get that? Innovation is like change. It makes people feel uncomfortable. But it cannot be resisted. It must be embraced and be implemented constantly. Whenever you are thinking of an idea and you talk to your supervisors about the idea and you say, this is the idea I have. The, the first reaction that you get from them, they, they become uncomfortable. Uh, if we accept this idea, will I still have a job? That's the first thing people say. Will I still be in charge? So innovation makes us feel uncomfortable, but you cannot resist it because if you do resist it, you're going to destroy your business. So you find a way of managing it. Live with innovation. Live would change. So innovation is like change. Whenever people see something that has to do with change, whenever they see that the company is changing, the organization, there, there are some changes that are being implemented, they feel uncomfortable. And they want to resist that because it, 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 it change, innovation is like change, it, it creates that uh, uncertainty about the future. Think about electric cars. If you think about electric cars, then you wonder what's gonna happen to fuel. So anyone who is in the sector feels uncomfortable. So we need to find off blocking this. Because this thing gonna take us off business. Instead of embracing and making a plan to say when that thing comes in, how are we going to benefit from it? That's what I was speaking about. That You can't run away from change. Same thing, you can't run away from innovation. It's, it's coming. So you can ask these, the owners of these companies, what happened to them? Kodak, what happened to them? And if the print media is not careful, I'm sure in five years to come, you won't have newspapers that are printed in, and, 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 and they put in shops. The world is becoming what? Digital. So even in rural areas, people will be, by then, will have mass phones to, to download newspapers online and read. So if you are banking on print media, you are in trouble. So you should start innovating so that you make sure that you manage innovation. It doesn't destroy your business but you capitalize, you capitalize. And I said here, it must be implemented what? Consistently. It's like technology is growing. It's fast, moving very fast. You have to keep up with technology. So you can't say, no, 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 this is what we did two years ago. By the time you come back, things have changed. We are living in a world that is changing. So think about the hotels that you used to uh, get their revenue from conferences. And now COVID is here. People are saying we can do a virtual conference. What happened to the revenue of, in the hospitality industry? So they need to innovate. They need to come up with another strategy. 
So that's why you must innovate consistently. After COVID, I had to advise many companies, change the strategy. I said, whatever that we did with you, I said to, 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 to them, I said, whatever that we did, there's COVID now. We need to revise. That's why most companies, most municipalities, they had to revisit their strategies. Now that things are like this, how do we move forward? So some companies said people must work at home until 2024. How will that affect the organization? How does that affect the trans taxi industry? People are no longer taking taxis to work. So can you see? It's, it's, it's something that came with a, what you are called. It's a, it's a natural disaster that we do not create. But it is here that requires people to be innovative. How do we survive in this environment? So implement it consistently. Number four, innovation creates convenience. That's innovation, creates convenience. Now think about, look, 10 years ago, uh, I will say to you, go to Mbangin. And for you to get there, you have to keep on, uh, as you are driving, you have to stop by the road if you see a person and ask for a direction. But today we do what? GPS. What do you call that? That's convenience. Innovation creates convenience. So that's why you need to innovate consistently. We've got smartphones. You can now do virtual meetings, Microsoft Teams, Zoom, by downloading an app on a smartphone while you're in a restaurant. You don't need to sit in a boardroom. Innovation creates what? Convenience. Then, Innovation leads to what? To efficiency. Efficiency means doing more with less. That's innovation. Instead of taking and flying everyone into Deben, you just put a computer, say, let us do a virtual meeting, and we have saved. We have saved what? Flight tickets. Air transport we have saved. Accommodation we are saving. So efficiency. That's innovation. It says we can still do more with less. So this is why it's important to understand innovation. Then there are some definitions that I came up with, which is number one. What is innovation? The successful introduction of new services. Introduction, successful introduction of new services, products, processes, business models, and ways of thinking. So you keep on trying and become, until you become successful. Innovation is the process by which new ideas turn into practical value in the world. An idea, everything starts as an idea. That's why I always say, you need to, and every company needs to create an environment where ideas are being welcomed where ideas are being entertained. Do not feel threatened when people are coming with ideas in your company. I know there are issues when a junior employee comes up with an idea to you as a manager and you have to take this idea to your supervisor, to the CEO of a company. So there are temptations there. First thing you say, I need to shoot it down or I pretend as if it's mine. So that it cannot be seen that it came from that one. It might be a billion rand idea. And I don't want to be embarrassed. So there must be a system in any company that allows ideas, exchange ideas. How can we do things better? I always tell our own marketing team always innovate. How can we do things better? Because if, if you don't innovate, you keep on doing one and the same thing every day. It loses attention. It gets boring. And when it starts getting boring, it loses value. 
always some advice some uh, ladies which, uh, which are in catering to say, you've been selling curry and rice for years. What else can you put in a stew, in a dish? What else can you put there? Innovation. To make your plate look delicious than one of your competitors. What, what should make me come to you and leave this one? You see, this is very important. You've got, uh, I know that we're coming from a, 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 a poor background where our mothers will just, all of them, uh, buy apples and go and sit at the taxi rank. All of them, they are selling apples and oranges. And then the question is, yes, I have to go and buy to them so that they can put food on the table for their children. So if I remove away sympathy, what else do they have? If I move away from being sympathetic, what else do they have? So you mustn't be such an entrepreneur that requires people to come to you because we are sympathetic that if we don't come to Zolile, he will die. So now we are feel uh, 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 emotional blackmail. We are blackmailed. Because if we don't go to him, he will say we're not supporting him. His business is dying. But there's no innovation there. There's no value from his doing. So we must move away from this thing of saying people must come to me because, uh, by the way, I'm, I'm, I'm coming from a poor background. They need to support me. And we are coming to you with this heart, sympathy, but we get nothing. We're going to do it for the first time. We're going to do it for the second time. For the third time, they won't come to you. I understand. For the first time when they give it to you, improve. Don't eat the man. Improve. They come the second time, they must see, oh, there's some changes here. Or I need to come to him now and again because he knows what needs to be done with the money that he started getting from a sympathetic heart. He's now innovating. So you need to be a person who play around with ideas. Number three, a continuous and a dynamic process in which ideas are transformed. You transform ideas into value. An idea becomes valuable when it's being what? Implemented. Mbom, you know that democracy started as an idea in Greek. Greece. The Greeks came up with the idea of what? Democracy. And today we still live in what? Democracy. Democracy is here. It came from, it's the idea. The Greeks said, how do you run the country? How do you, what is the best way of running a country? They think, they thought about these things. They said, democracy. They sold it to everyone. We are singing democracy today. It's agil, but it's here. <laughs> democracy. It's Nigan King. We are struggling with our constitution. We are told it's a democratic country, but the practicality of democracy is not in our favor as black people. But it's here. It's still, we still believe it's the best system of running a country. So ideas uh, uh, become valuable once they are implemented. Number four, Innovation is to improve or replace something. To improve or replace something. We are always innovating at NMC in our production. Go and watch our first video that we did with Temba, June 2020, and look the videos that we have done from since then. Improvement. That's innovation. Because after each session, we sit down with him, he knows the standard needs to grow. Keep growing every day. So you need to improve. You need to improve. I heard that you did a good job at uh, Nourish Wellness Center Mbomf. But next time when they meet you, there must be some improvement. So in, in a language of what you call the scriptural language, you said don't dwell too much on the glory that you received yesterday. Keep on improving. Same thing applies to any business. If people were to, this business is good, 
Ainga ngene kandeleyo. Keep on improving. I think that's where that's, that's, that's where the downfall comes from. When you think you are you you have it, I'm there already. Be always uh, 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 someone who is willing to learn a new thing every day. Be a learner every day. Learn every day. That's the only way you improve things. Two, replace. Improve or replace something. When something is not working, replace it. So don't just sit with something which is no longer working. Any company, they do replace products. Co- company cars will tell you that. Now we have to replace, we have to stop uh, manufacturing that, uh, that, 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 that model. Did not work for us. We came up with something else. So it must be like that. Then the last one is, someone asked me then, how can innovation thrive in a business? How can innovation thrive in a business? And I said, you need to create a culture of innovation in your organization. If you want innovation, innovation to thrive in your business, therefore you need to create a culture of innovation. Um, a culture of innovation simply says everyone don't do one and the same thing every day. If you are doing reports, make sure that each time you bring them to me, there's something new there. The quality keeps on growing. You innovate. And find the best way and the most efficient way of doing a report. So you keep on learning the new tools that are available in Microsoft. So explore. Innovate. Then I said the culture of shooting down ideas can be catastrophic for an organization in the near future. The culture of shooting down ideas can be catastrophic for an organization in the near future. So you don't just shoot down ideas. You need to embrace them. You see, if you, if, if you, if you are in business, you embrace ideas. Good example, what Vodacom did by embracing the please call me idea it, it did wonders. Let alone the issues of ethical leadership that they don't want to pay now, the person who came up with the idea. But the idea did work. It, from Vodacom, then all other companies started to join in. There are people who still even use, please call me even today, if Benga said, I'm a data, what's up? <laughs> they go to what? Please call me. So that idea, was embraced by the top leadership. They didn't say, no, but you are June. I said, no, no, it's fine. So I'm saying, you create a culture of innovation. So that's what, that's what we need to do in all our companies, a culture of innovation. At MMC, at Zibusa Wealth, at Zimboeti, and anywhere, the culture of innovation must be the order of the day. So, if, if you look at uh, the way Google operates, they embrace the culture of innovation. Come up with ideas. How can we make this engine to be the most valuable engine in the world? That's what happened. How can you make this engine to be the most valuable searching engine in the world? They embrace the culture of innovation. Can we do that as well? So have a session with your team every month. When they are reporting to you challenges, ask solutions from them. When they report, oh, oh good. When they report challenges to you, ask them to give, so what, what, what do you think is the solution? By doing that, next time when they have a challenge, you are not around, they will implement a solution in your absence. So this thing of saying, I want them to, to, to tell me uh, what is making things difficult for them to do the work, then I will provide, must not be the culture. Allow them to say, 
you had a problem and you thought of a solution and you consulted me, I approved. I was not there, but I think the solution that you provided at that particular moment was adequate. So culture of innovation. Then the last one, before I wrap up, and I said, we, we, we're gonna continue with the session, uh, session two. I was just introducing this innovation thing because it seems as if we, we don't take it seriously. Whereas other companies are taking innovation very, very seriously. So the last one will be You must always be willing to learn from your competitor. Don't copy, but learn from your competitor. Don't copy everything that they do. What is the best way of defeating your enemy? Is to know their strategy. The best way of defeating your enemy or your opponent is to know their strategy. How do they fight? That's why if you are in soccer, in soccer games, you will find that the coach will firstly go and watch maybe five uh, soccer games with this team against many teams. Want to see how do they attack? How do they defend? Then you will hear them in, in, in media briefing and say, no, 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 I know this team. They have a challenge when it comes to defense. We're going to capitalize on that. I know this team. Whenever they attack, they ignore the defense line. They, they attack as a group. We're going to capitalize on that. So you need to master... Uh, this thing of knowing uh, the, the strategies of your opponents in this game. Whoever that you are competing with, that's why there's something called competitor analysis. So you must be able to do that, competitor analysis in business. So if you're an NMC, who am I competing with? Bring them here. What do they do right? What makes them win? What makes them lose? competitor analysis. You must always be willing to learn because your competition does not only do bad things. They do good things. Learn their good things and twist them. Come up with a new product. Twist. So you just add a few things. You don't need a lot of capital. Few things. Then we, we didn't know this thing of uh, Customer experience. We don't know it. Customer experience. What is customer experience? Customer experience is when I say I want to feel welcome at NMC. I must not forget that today I went to NMC offices. Why? Because of the experience. As I was coming through the door, someone came to me. They greeted me. They asked my name and they gave me a cup of tea. In fact, they asked me if I need tea or that, that's experience. It's, it's innovation. It's innovation. How many people will say, I will not go back to that restaurant? People are rude. They've got good food, but they are rude. Customer experience is innovation. So you innovate a way. Uh, in churches, man, Temba, you implement these things. You make sure when there's a, a new person starting coming to church, you make sure that the person feels important. So making people feel important is innovation. It's a strategy on its own. So having to sit there, no one is coming to greet you, but you're, you're a customer, it makes you feel unimportant and you want to go somewhere else. So that's why whenever I go to different offices, the first thing I notice, customer experience. Am I welcomed here? Am I, do I feel like somebody or I'm treated like nobody? And everyone, Believe me, when you feel that you are treated like nobody in any company, you want to leave. And you want to, you want to make sure that there's nothing that takes you back there in the future.
So customer experience. So customer experience is innovation. How many of us are doing it? Oh, good. When people are coming to NMC, I would practice and they don't respond. Kule, customer experience. Pumasigma golf tournament. Everyone at FMC, I would do in that. At Zibus, I would do customer experience. It's innovation. I will hold it there for today. It was just part one introduction on innovation. We're not just discussing strategies of innovation. It's just an introduction why innovation is important.